what we've got here is a ZRAC 8x56 uh, hunting scope that's that's dis been dismantled. Years ago, I, my dad used to always say to me, to, if you wanted to understand how something's made, one of the best things to do is to start taking it apart and have a look inside. And I found over the years that often things that look uh, really good on the outside, sometimes when you take them apart, they're not so good and you can see any um, shortcuts in the manufacturing and so on that have been made is always hidden inside rather than it might look beautiful on the outside but often the most important bits are on the inside so I decided to have a close examination of one of these rack scopes to see how it was constructed okay so it's an 8 by 56 here's a the scope that's fully assembled and here we've got it uh, partially disassembled. So we've got the main tube, which is a one piece tube here, which is all steel. Now you can see that that's one of the features of this rack is you can see this is thick steel construction. Uh, it's, it's quite amazing that to have a scope uh, that is a 56 millimeter objective, that it's actually quite compact it's quite small and uh, when you look at the objective lens uh, you know the whole scope you wouldn't think it was a 56 millimeter uh, objective but it in fact it is and you can measure it quite easily across here on the inside we see it's 56 but it's got quite a um, slim profile and on the outside of the housing we've got about 62 millimeters there across and uh, the tube itself is a 26 millimeter tube which is very common for european style scopes 26 there but yeah you can see that the construction with the one piece tube uh, it's very very strong okay and the way it's constructed um, we'll have a few close-ups of these in a moment we'll just go over it briefly we've got the uh, erector tube assembly inside here now this is a very close fitting assembly that goes up inside the tube like it's very snug in here so I'm not going to push it all the way up because it's quite tight and it's very important that it's tight so it doesn't flop around and come loose. Okay, so that is that fits up inside there with the reticle. We've got um, our elevation and windage adjustment mechanisms which sit on top here, which we'll look at these more closely, sit on here, and they're attached by screws, small screws that go down through the tube and they lock in to this assembly so this pushes up screws in through there and the whole lot is extremely well sealed as we'll uh, have a look at the sealing uh, methods shortly as well when we look at it in a bit more detail but uh, we'll have to go for some some close-ups it's a 26 mil tube now on this particular one here we're using 30 mil rings and we've got uh, delrin reducers that bring it down to 26 so some one inch rings will uh, spring out over the 26 mil tube okay just depends how they're designed but certainly uh, if you've got 30 mil rings and these reducers they do a good job of mounting up the scopes so we'll just go to some close-ups now of some of these assemblies okay let's have a few look at a few close-ups of how um, this scope is constructed just come in bring the camera in a bit closer to this if you can see the precision uh, fitting of these threads it's a bit hard to convey on the camera but of course these elevation and windage adjustments are very critical here we've got threads that are very precise and they uh, fit with a very minimal play in the thread okay so they're they're a, uh, a very nice uh, adjustment here. 
and that fits on top of the scope tube secured down by these little small screws to hold that together now when the scope is assembled uh, this has got a good seal under here so that the uh, nitrogen in the tube won't escape and we've got um, precision fitting caps over these so when that's screwed down you've got like a double uh, double seal over that now we've got elevation and windage at 90 degrees of course on the side of the main tube now the way that that works is that these adjustments go down through here and press whoops press on these points on each side and inside this tube you can see I don't know if you can see get the camera right in there just remember getting the right angle you can see that this will move this erector tube assembly and depending on the elevation and windage controls now the spring that pushes against them is very strong uh, underneath you can see this has got a leaf spring arrangement under here which is uh, very common for tubes of this size it's a very strong spring so when the elevation and windage adjustments are pressing down on it uh, you're not going to get much movement there during when you fire your rifle now I don't know if the camera can capture this reticle in here but it's a beautiful reticle um, etched on the glass it's very fine in the middle and we'll be looking at that later on to um, show you exactly what that reticle looks like when you're actually looking through the scope okay so yeah that's um, that's a very important element of the construction now another thing that's very important is the ceiling now once this is all pushed together we don't want moisture and anything to get into the scope so this was something that I was very interested to see how they're sealing it and if I unscrew this cover here it's a little bit tight Just bear with me for a second get this off it's a fine thread You'll be able to see how the scope main tube is sealed okay so we slide this off okay if you can get in close with the camera you can see that we've got two o-rings there we've got three seals right so there's three different layer levels of sealing as this fits up inside the tube you see so those those rubber seals there they push up inside the tube and uh, they're going to absolutely keep it uh, sealed so we've got like three three different um, sealing surfaces two o-rings and another gasket rubber gasket around here so for sure this scope is very well sealed um, you can see that another thing of course about the Zrak scopes is that they have uh, this shot glass which is which is very clear now it's a bit hard to show this but I'm hoping that we can get look down through the main objective lens with the camera oops and have a look see if we can get down through there to look at something if we can um, get into it to see how clear it is and how what natural color rendering comes from the lenses like you don't see any uh, changes in the in the color it's like a it's a very good lens there okay so that's good yeah so you can see that hopefully that was captured okay so that's that gives you an idea of how this scope is constructed now if you take apart some scopes uh, you'll see that the, that the parts don't fit as closely, um, that they don't have the same strength, they don't have the same level of sealing that this scope has. So um, it's a simple, straightforward design. There's no uh, features added to it that you don't need. Like it's uh, it's just a um, a straightforward uh, 
design that's designed to give you the optimum optical performance.